Greta Thunberg, the teenage uh, climate change activist, is currently en route across the Atlantic in a carbon-free, <coughs> high-tech racing yacht, uh, trying to avoid all the possible carbon implications of planes and cruise ships and all the like. Uh, and she's been seen by many people, of course, as the great animator of this climate crisis debate that is now rolling out across the world. We've seen the implications in some elections here and across Europe. Some people say she's, in fact, the world's most significant, most impressive current activist. Who knows? This 16-year-old might end up with a Nobel Peace Prize one of these days uh, for helping to raise the alarm about the climate crisis. But that's only one set of opinions. Others are concerned. How can she afford to do this? She's just 16 years old, crossing the world in a high-tech yacht. Is somebody else <coughs> pulling her strings? Is she being used, manipulated by others? And is her campaign tantamount, actually, to alarmism? 03030-805555 with your thoughts on that question. Brendan O'Neill, the editor of Spiked, is with us, along with the people before Profit Councillor Fiona Ferguson. Welcome to both of you. And and Brendan, that's my pressy, in fact, of your arg of your argument. Yes, I think she is being manipulated. I think she's being exploited. I think she's being pushed to the forefront of a very misanthropic, depressing form of the politics of fear. I think that's bad for her because we know that she is a rather mentally fragile young girl. And I think it's bad for political debate because the end result is that anyone who raises any criticisms of this campaign is shouted down as someone who hates children and who hates Greta Thunberg. What are the criticisms you have to make about the campaign itself? It's hysterical. I think it is becoming, it's becoming increasingly deranged. And when a child stands up in a room full of adults and says, the planet is on fire and we only have 10 or 11 years left before we cross a point where humanity is doomed, that is a form of hysteria. And the role of adults in such a situation should not be to cheer and applaud as this child tells them she is absolutely terrified for her own future. It should be to comfort her and to use reason and rationalism to say to her, things aren't that bad and humankind is pretty good with coming, at coming up with solutions. The, the environmentalist movement is becoming a religious cult with its predictions of doom and its worship of this messiah-like figure who they think has come to save us from sin. Fiona Ferguson. Well, of course, it isn't just Greta Thunberg who's saying that the world will end if, or that the world and humanity <laughs> will cross past a point um, where things woman. will change for the worse um, in 10 to 12 years, is it? It's many scientists, it's the majority of scientists and it's accepted by people who study this thing day in, day out, right across the world. But that's not the main thing that I want to take issue <clears> with. I'm not surprised that Brendan O'Neill um, thinks the way that he does. The thing that I want to take issue with Brendan is your full uh, empathy with Greta Thunberg. You, the man who said just now that she's mentally fragile with having absolutely no experience um, of her mental capacity. You who say that she is the leader of an eco-religious cult. You, the man who called this young woman chilling. You, the man who said that she and her, her eyes look like they're apocalyptically dead. You, the man who called her a millennial weirdo. Yes, you did. I read that this morning in one of your spiked articles. So the reality is you don't care about Greta Thunberg. The reality the reality is, is that you've run out of arguments in this debate because you know that the science is with her. You know that the majority of people have accepted that we need to be taking the kind of action that she's talking about. You know that she's done more than many of the world leaders um, uh, anywhere right across the world. You've lost the argument and now you're resorting to really quite offensive uh, slurs. What message are you sending out to people with autism who live quite functionally and capably every day? I heard you have a conversation this morning uh, with Julia Hartley Brewer about why this child or this young woman should be protected at home because she has an eating disorder. What message are you sending out to young women with eating disorders? You've absolutely no right <coughs> to speak um, nor uh, any uh, anything as far as I'm aware in your background that gives you the authority to speak on these matters and I think that what you have said should be condemned outright. Brendan O'Neill. You know nothing about my background whatsoever, number one. Number two, I have never 
in my life mentioned Greta Thunberg having an eating disorder and I didn't even know she had one. You were in, so a, you, you were in a conversation you, this morning with Julia Hartley Brewer where Julia Hartley Brewer uh, asked the question, this young woman has an eating disorder, this young woman has severe mental disabilities, shouldn't she be at home protected by these adults rather than manipulated? And you said exactly and then moved on to make your point. I right. listened to it minutes Let's ago. Give Brandon a chance for That was yesterday, not today. I had no idea Greta Thunberg had an eating disorder. I've never mentioned that so you can only hold me accountable for my words surely not for other people's but the point is if even if you go back to that first article i wrote which you've just quoted there my point in that is the same point i'm making now the problem here is not greta greta is a 16 year old girl she's very driven she's very very capable we can all see that the problem is adult society the teachers the politicians the celebrities who are cheering on this girl's sense of complete and utter panic. And she uses that word herself. She says, I want you to panic. I want you to be terrified. This is a cult of fear. And for adults to stir up that cult of fear, uh, for a girl who, according to her mother, in a book that she wrote, has numerous mental health issues, for, for adults to do that to a girl is absolutely unforgivable because what they are doing, they are using her as a moral shield to protect their environmentalist beliefs from any form of criticism. And in the process, I think they could be doing great harm to that girl. I think but, it is... But Brent, it's Brendan, shame, there, are, it is... there are many people who have Asperger's. Mm -hmm. There are many people who have... Yeah depression, very leading politician. Yeah. Churchill struggled with depression throughout his entire life. You can be strong, you can be prophetic, you can have important things to say, and you might even have a greater strength in saying them with all of those challenges. Why I, focus on that? It sounds I'm to many people focusing. like... It, well, it does. You, you're, you're I'm not focusing on that. You've been focusing that. on it in most of your answers. It sounds like an ad hominem attack rather than dealing it's, with the issue. There are lots of people who think there are good reasons to be concerned about the climate crisis. Of course there are. I, I, I don't disagree with that. I do think they vastly exaggerate the problems, but I don't disagree that protecting the environment is a pretty decent thing to do. What I'm saying is that this is a, ch this is a child, she uses that word herself, I wouldn't describe 16-year-olds as children, but she calls herself a child. And this is a child who, um, by her own definition, has Asperger's, and according to her family, has had mental health problems. Now, that's not my focus. I'm simply saying that for adults to push this child further and further into the realm of fear and the realm of panic, I think is a complete and utter abdication of adult responsibility. I don't think that you can have it both ways. She is a young adult, isn't she? Yeah, she's yes, a young I adult. Would say she is. But the point is, even if it was me at 27 years of age, you were saying these things too, I would call you a bully. That's what you're doing. The fact that she's 16 year old just makes it weirder. And can I say, you can't have it both ways. You've just said that at one point, I'm wrong because you think she's capable. And in the next sentence, called her hysterical and mentally fragile. No, I, no, William I didn't is call right. her hysterical. Yes, you did. I did not call her hysterical. You said, the campaign, words, you said the campaign said was hysterical. The green movement is becoming increasingly hysterical, which is why I think it's irresponsible of them to use a child at the forefront of that campaign. Sorry, you just called her mentally fragile. My apologies, I will come back on that. But what Williams just said is bang on. What you are doing is focusing on her because you have lost the argument. No, you say on the one hand that you think it's right, it's morally right to stand up against climate injustice, but on the other hand you're doing everything you can to tear down a young woman who is inspiring people right across the world. Look, I don't agree with her on everything that she's doing. I don't think that I what could do you find jump on her yet. I think she's. I think she has done more than any world leader uh, to make, create movements right around the world against this. She has pushed the issue to the fore of politics in a way that it was being suppressed uh, before. <clears throat> on the twentieth of September, there would be uprisings right across the world because of her words. I think that this is the kind of action that we need. I do think we need to panic. And you know what? Say all of the things that you're saying uh, to her to me. If you think I'm hysterical, fine. But the reality is, in 10, 12 years, when change hasn't come because people like you have tried to suppress it, it will be people uh, in the worst kind of conditions now whose lives are made even worse. I will not stand by while that kind of change happens, whether you think I'm hysterical or not. I don't think you're... I don't know anything about you. I don't know if you're hysterical. But what I do know, and this is where the argument does get interesting, for people like you to present yourselves as left-wing and then to sign up with a movement that is explicitly opposed to human industry, explicitly opposed to human progress and explicitly opposed to modernisation. Hold on, let it? me finish one point. 
The point I'm making is that I consider myself as a man of the left. And when I look back at my heroes from the left, whether it's Karl Marx, who denounced Thomas Malthus and his hysterical predictions of overpopulation, or Sylvia Pankhurst, the most revolutionary of the suffragettes, who argued that we want to create a world in which we would produce more stuff than people could actually consume. I look back at a history of the left, which was pro-industry, pro-economic growth, pro-modernization. And what we now have are people like you who masquerade as left-wing. But, but under you know that cover, hold, me. I'm just finishing my point. <laughs> under that cover, you are pushing an incredibly regressive, anti-human, anti-progressive message. And that's why I think one of the great, one of the really right. depressing things about the Green Movement is the way the left has signed up to it in such an uncritical way. I don't think you've been listening to the left on this, Brandon, because one I of the have. things that the left have been saying... Uh, in a big way over the last number of years is that there is an incredible opportunity here for industry to adapt to create green technology to create environmental technology which could lead to a, a green and, and more environmentally friendly society and can contribute to the just transition that we will need to take us from the point that we're at wrong to focus. a different kind of society that's it's up to you focus. that's your opinion but it's don't te- but don't we no 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 let me finish my point do not say that people like me who masquerade as the left first of all come on second of all uh do not say that we do not that we are anti-industry on this. We are anti the society right. that is ravaging. The can I, can I just bring in a couple of calls as well? We talked to Brendan O'Neill and Fiona Ferguson. John Wright's uh, on the line from Greenpeace. Hello, John. Thank you, William. Uh, very very happy to uh, to batter our way out of this uh, rather negative and hostile debate and uh, present a view of a better future. I thought it was going quite I, well, actually. Yes. <laughs> thank you, William, <laughs> uh, and uh, and thank you, Fiona, for dealing with Brendan because. I've come across a lot of climate deniers, and they are behaving extremely. Com- well, uh, I'm not sure Brendan. I'm, I'm not, not a, sure Brendan is a climate, climate denier, is he? But it's fine. I'm used to being defamed in this effect. discussion. Uh, but uh, but uh, the positive image I got published recently in the East Belfast uh, e newspaper, and uh, we're we're basically advocating uh, climate uh, mitigation measures, but they, they would have good effects, like electricity bills can come down because wind turbines are the cheapest mm. electricity bar none. We can have a far better air quality because we can get electric vehicles. We can reduce the cost of transport again because electric is cheaper to run. And there are difficulties with uh, transport congestion. I mean, one of the reasons I benefited uh, yesterday was I didn't have to sit in the ghastly congestion that so many people <laughs> got caught up in last night because I, I got a bicycle. It's cheap, efficient and social and good for you. So there are plenty of great suggestions and great ways of, of accommodating climate change, but it is an actual fact. And the, the fact that Brendan is giving airtime to call it hysteria mm. is well, he's, really he's, very negative. Look, let's be clear here. We, we, we are not debating climate science. Brendan O'Neill just told you he's not a climate science denier. We're debating the campaign around <coughs> Greta Thunberg. Yeah, uh, John, and whether she's a terrific leader for our well, for indeed, young but but also divides people in terms of their response to her. Surely, um, the the way in which we respond to climate change depends on whether we have power. Greta is mostly asking for people with power to finally mm. come up to the mark and do what they're supposed to do. Our politicians and our and our people in business. She, Greta is not specifying how we might we come at accommodate climate crisis but it is happening mm. and the people in power is whom she is really All pointing right. the finger at and unfortunately the people who take cheap shots at her is one of the reasons she's having to undergo this yeah. really onerous journey i've done sailing and i i can't even imagine how tough it's going to be for her All to right. cross the atlantic thank you very much and you, you, uh, um, brandon maybe you can comment i'm sure you don't agree with this but aaron banks this tweet that he put out today uh, on this story of Greta Thunberg crossing the Atlantic in the in this um, in this yacht, he said freak uh, accidents do happen uh, around uh, yachting travel in August. I've, I completely disagree with that. I think that's a really horrible comment. But I think we do have to make a distinction between those people who are making horrible comments about her, like Aaron Banks, and those who are raising criticisms of the manipulation of her and mm. also of the movement which she has become a figurehead of. And it's entirely legitimate to criticise political movements. But you called her chilling. You said that her eyes looked apocalyptically dead. 
That's I not s- critiquing her politics. And actually, but, I think that the last conversation just hit on the most important thing here. And that is that we should not be surprised that people like Brendan, um, like other commentators, um, and the system in general, the system that profits off the ravaging of our environment <sighs> would respond to a young woman challenging it. Can, That's I, can, what I, can I ask can something I, no. about this? I don't want to sound too novelistic, but I'm trying to understand why why Greta Thunberg has become so significant in this movement. And I've, I wonder if some of her challenges, personal challenges, and her age are not actually part of the reason for that. Because, I mean, again, I don't, I don't want to be too fantastic about this, but she kind of embodies the fragility of the of the planet question we're talking about. And we have this long tradition of, you know, the, the babes, the young people speaking wisdom to the elders from time to time in a kind of prophetic role. It's not going too far, Brendan, is it, to say that she combines some of that? She's a lightning rod. No, but I think that the use of her to, in that role is ridiculous. And to the extent that I think she comes across as chilling, my argument is that she has been made that way by, by her own, she says that she first started to feel absolute terror about the environment and the future in a lesson at school. So my argument is that adults have a lot to answer for here because they are filling children with fear. But more we to the point, you know, just speaking of the broader picture here, I actually think it's morally repugnant that in a world in which three billion people still live in poverty, the discussion that is obsessing privileged, mostly white Westerners, is how can we slow down economic growth? How can we rein in human industry? How can we do less and make a smaller uh, footprint on, on the planet? you know that, that, is that, complete, that is not the discussion is, from the end. You've got that the final 25 seconds. complete abdication of Fiona. progressive I think that, to answer your previous question, William, that Greta Thunberg has been a lightning rod, and I think that you're right. She didn't just appear one day in this, it's because there was already a movement there, and she has appeared as a lightning rod, as the personification of what all of us are feeling. Maybe it is the fragility that we see in her and the movement, Maybe it's something else, but I think that it's because there was already that sentiment there and that feeling there because people are afraid. It's not okay to just call them hysterical. We have to actually deal with this issue. Thank you both, Fiona Ferguson, Thank Brendan you. O'Neill. My goodness, passion all over the place on Talk Back today. They, they need their own show together, don't they, those two? I'd listen to them every week.